and welcome back to my channel. My name is Elia Esparza for those who are new here and if you're not new, thank you so much for returning. I love you guys. I'm really excited to have grown my YouTube channel to over 1,200 subscribers now, so if you're watching this, I would so, so appreciate if you subscribe. I upload at least once a week. I do a lot of lifestyle, fashion, vlogging, living in Nashville situations, so would definitely, definitely love if you subscribed and joined the family. I actually made a resolution and goal video a couple years ago on this channel. Like it was one of my first videos. I think it was, I can't remember if it was 2021 or 20, definitely not 2022, but I think it was 2021, maybe even 2020. I don't know, I'll have to go back and watch it. I haven't watched it because I didn't want it. I just wanted to wait and see what my goals are now and then be able to compare them. But I love making videos like these. I love watching videos like these. I love seeing people's goals, resolutions, where they've been, where they wanna go. It's just overall inspiring to me. Also to hopefully inspire you. If you haven't thought about your goals or maybe you're just not into that too much, maybe this will inspire you to write at least two to three goals, something that you wanna get done because I really do believe that like envisioning yourself, like your future self is so important to reach goals and places that you want to go. Also, sorry if the lighting keeps changing. I'm using, I'm trying to use natural lighting but it's kind of a gloomy day today so I'm like, what's my vibe like will the sun come out or will the clouds stay out who knows we'll see all right let's get into it so one of the main things that i use to kind of reflect on my past year before going into the new year is this workbook called unravel your year so i've been using this workbook for literal years i can't probably since like 2013. i used to print it out i used to get it laminated it used to be a whole thing i used to like color everything in i would literally only get it in black and white because it was cheaper that way and this is when i was living in new york city and i was just acting and going to auditions and things like that but i've just kept it up through the years and it's so crazy to see the amount of growth because I did keep all those workbooks from the past and then last year when I got my iPad I decided to do it digitally so I was able to easily just like go to my last one and see what I wrote like the goals from last year and my visions for the following year and then what to see what happened and like what didn't happen or things that I want to work on so this is a free download it's available on susannaconway.com we'll put her website down below so you guys can check it out I think all you have to do is literally sign up with your email and she'll send it right to you if you have an iPad then you can use it digitally I just import it into GoodNotes and then I have my Apple Pen and I just write everything through. Of course, there's something magical about pen to paper for me. Something that I'm like, maybe I'll do that next year, but just for now, I wanted to just have it digitally and to really be able to like go back and forth and kind of look at it often because I feel like when I would do the workbooks, it would just be like finished, and then put away and then lost in the abyss. So basically the first part of the workbook is to say farewell to 2022. And it asks you, you know, describe 22 in three words. I put change, uncomfort, different, and then this is a fourth one, but I put travel because I traveled so much last year. Uh, if the events of 2022 were made into a film or book, what would it be called? Describe the plot and main characters of 2022, any unexpected plot twists. And so for me, it was a, I turned 30, I moved across the country, I moved to, from El Paso, Texas to Nashville, Tennessee, and it was a lot of change for me in my life, but also for my friends and family as well. My parents moved. A lot of my friends got new careers, new jobs, got married. Like it was a huge year. It was also the last year of my 20s. So it was definitely like a huge change shift, you could say, in my life. I feel like every few years, something really big happens like that. And there were a few years where things were just pretty much the same. You know, it was just working, singing. I'm an artist, I'm a recording artist and a performer. So I was just doing my gigs. It was just kind of like routine and mundane. And not that that's a bad thing because I feel like now I really appreciate those years where I was like, I was surrounded by my friends, my family. I had my gigs like set in stone, nothing ever changed. But at the same time, I do remember several times crying through the year, like I am not progressing. Like I'm consistent, which is a good thing, but I don't feel like I'm challenging myself or progressing so for me this year was a huge change in that of like getting stripped away of all my comfort and 
just being given a whole new landscape to work with. Moving here to Nashville, I wouldn't say like, I definitely don't regret moving. I knew it was time for me, but it's definitely shifted my perspective and my priorities. And because all these things are away from me, like I don't have my family here, I have a few friends here, but I don't have like my best friends here. It's really made me focus on my craft, my music, my art, and like what I want to create. Also, I did this on the plane ride going to Boston because we were going there for Christmas. So this workbook does take a little bit of time. I wouldn't say you could do it all in one day, but it's really nice if you just take it day by day. If you, even if you do a couple pages a day, or if you go to a coffee shop and you write through half of it, the first, the first half of the workbook is basically saying goodbye to 2022, reflecting on it. It'll take you month by month, like January, February, March of like words that described each month. And then also what challenged you, what lifted you up and the key moments and memories. And surprisingly, like I had very vivid memories of each month, maybe because there was so much change, but, and I went on a lot of trips, but it was really cool to look back and I even went on my phone and just went through like the photos to kind of remind me of certain things that happened that I didn't necessarily remember and that's always nice. I'm a big photo taker even if I don't post it. Like I just love memories and reflection so it was really nice to go through the like, it was really nice to go through each month and be like wow like I did have an amazing year because sometimes Maybe you're reflecting on your year in your present self and maybe it's not the best place to be. But when you reflect back and you're like, I actually had a great time on that trip or it was my friend's wedding or I went to this concert or I had a great random night out with my friends. I feel like all of those moments really compile up into something amazing. It also talks a lot about what you wanna let go of the year, like what struggles you might have dealt with, challenges, things that you think might have held you back. So I really like that because it makes you think not just of the good, but also of the bad, or just everything in between. It just makes you think about like, you know what, I could have saved more money. I could have worked a little bit harder. I could have applied for more gigs. I could have, I mean, could have, would have, should have, right? But it's nice to reflect on that because going forward, anything that might be pressing on you is really cool to kind of look back and be like, okay, it's 2023 and it's like a new year. I feel like you just have that motivation to kind of go back in and not fix, but really like hone in on your insecurities, your challenges and things that you want to overcome. Basically you get to a point where you sign off on 2022. Like the whole thing is like not to hold on to the past and to really just reflect, accept and see what you can improve on. and let it go that's like my favorite part because it makes it feel like i know i went through all these things i've accepted them i've thought about them and now we're moving on we're moving on because the only way is forward also i should have prefaced this this video is probably going to be like 20 30 minutes of me just like talking about life so it's kind of like a deeper video for me on my channel i mean i'm always talking about i'm always telling you guys like literally everything that's going on because i feel the most present and genuine on YouTube. Like I just grabbed my camera and I'm like, no one is watching this as I'm filming it, but then I know you guys are going to watch it. So I don't know. So then the workbook takes you into the next part, which is choosing your word and saying hello to 2023. So for me personally, my word this year is bold. I feel like when I moved, I lost a bit of my confidence because I was just in a whole new environment and a whole new space. I didn't have my friends or family, like I said, and even though my boyfriend and I moved here together, he's like always on tour. So I spent a lot of time alone and I feel like I became insecure about things I had never even thought about being insecure about. And it really affected me. It really affected like the choices I was making and what I wanted to wear or things I wanted to go do. So I really, really, really want to be a lot more bold in my choices, in my presence, in my videos, in my outfits, in my voice, in my songs, in my performance, in everything I do, bold just really, really stuck out to me. And it felt like a word that I needed for this year because it took me about like six months to kind of gain my confidence back, find who I was again, my personality, like what I wanna do. I feel like some days were just so, I was so lost and really didn't have a lot of direction. And a lot of it had to do with just Sometimes too much time alone is not good. <laughs> and I think I had a lot of time by myself. So I was just like overthinking way too much. So 
bold felt like a really great word for me. And it'll go in and ask you like a bunch of questions of like, how would you use this word in your career, in your goals, in your heart, in your relationships, in your personal and physical world. So you just kind of go through like reflecting like how you want to use this word and how you think it'll make you feel and how to approach different situations. I love this part. It's called everything is possible and it's basically using this blank page to write out your ideal word. All you have to do is write your ideal life. And this could be as simple as just like grabbing a piece of paper. You don't need the workbook to do this. But if you started from the moment you woke up to the moment you ended, how would your ideal day go? And then how would your ideal life be? You could do like a week and then, or a month or even a year of just like these events happening. I'm involved in this. Every day I wake up and I do this. So for me personally, it's like, waking up, meditating, journaling, moving my body, so going to work out, and then coming home or going somewhere to create music, content, perform, tour, like my ideal life is all about creativity and like creating content and music that really like speaks for my soul. So that's basically my ideal life. So you can think about yours of like, what would your ideal perfect day be? I like to think of it like this, like on your birthday, if you're a birthday girl like me, like I love celebrating my birthday. On your birthday, when you wake up, it's like you have no worries because it's your birthday. And that's how I feel like we should treat every single day of like doing your favorite things just because you want to. And it's not a special day for anyone else but you because it's your birthday. But what if we treated it like that every single day? Make it like your birthday every day. <laughs> It could be said for honestly like a vacation when you're on vacation you have no worries you're just like living life you wake up you enjoy the sun you do whatever you want basically on vacation and on your birthday so what if we treated every day like that with the responsibilities obviously because we have those but making them fun making them lighthearted, making them just your ideal life so that's that and then it basically goes through the power of three like releasing unhelpful beliefs what would you do if you if you did whatever you wanted um, your three passions uh, that you your three passions that you want to explore this year three ways to tend to your inner child it's honestly an amazing workbook and I'm skipping through a lot of it because of time purposes but highly highly recommend going through this because if you really don't know what you're doing or what you want or you just feel like jumbled in your brain, this will help you clear that up so quickly. And then the wrap up is 2023 will finally be the year that I blank. I will nourish myself with blank. I will make up time for and I will pay more attention to. This year I will say no to the year I say yes to myself. I wish for 2023 to feel bold, incredible, magical, unmanageable, and dreamy, romantic, fun, and like a movie. And you're the star of the movie. <laughs> That's something that I wrote. And then you basically sign it at the end. I wholeheartedly believe that everything is possible in 2023. And that's a huge thing for me this year is like mindset is everything. Vibration, your energy, everything that you're like waking up to, doing throughout the day is just, it's gonna be the key. It's gonna be the key. It does have each month, like January 23 through the year of just being able to say what you're grateful for. This month I could, you know, ideas of what you wanna do and then your intentions. This month I need more. This month I want less and how I'll tend to my head, heart and home and your dreams. So it's just kind of a great check-in for you know, just like how you want each month to go because I feel like January, we're all super inspired. And then by the end of like <laughs> April, we're like, all right, we're over it. What, <laughs> what goals, what resolutions? But it's a really great reminder to keep yourself going throughout the year. All right, this next part is really me just going through my goals that I kind of just wrote down on my phone in my notes app because sometimes when I sit down to think about my goals, I'm like nothing, not that nothing comes to mind, but I'm just like, not as inspired and then i'll just be like randomly at the gym and be like boom all my <laughs> all my resolutions are ready and coming to fruition as i'm doing these squats so for career wise one of my biggest goals is to write as much music as i can i feel like i struggle a lot through just literally sitting down and writing songs even though that's like my 
end goal of to be a professional recording artist, performer, a pop star, I should say. I'm now scheduled two times in the week to sit down for at least an hour to just songwrite, put everything away, not do any dishes. The one thing about working from home is I get distracted very, very easily. So I wanna write at least 10 songs a month, which is totally doable over the whole month. Vocalize and sing every single day. So vocalizing for 30 minutes, singing for at least an hour to two hours. I would really, really love to learn more about the music industry. So I picked up a book, Everything You Need to Know About the Music Industry, and I'm currently reading that. I definitely want to connect with more producers, songwriters, artists here in Nashville, and pretty much anywhere. I'm totally open to working with people everywhere. But one of the main reasons I moved to Nashville was to be able to network with people in person, and I would love to connect with more people in the pop music space, but specifically pop music because there's tons of country artists and music and all of that too. I still wanna connect with them, but I just really wanna find a community here in Nashville to really like, just bring my grounding in. <laughs> of course, another is to grow my YouTube channels, my TikTok, my Instagram, all my socials. I love creating content so much. So just to bring up my views, bring up my audience, get more followers on Spotify to listen to my original music, which if you wanna to listen to my original music, it's on Spotify <laughs> or Apple Music or anywhere you listen to music. So I will link all of that down below. And I would love to book some sort of a tour by the end of the year, or at least have the resources to do so. So basically like I'm going from step one, which is like writing a bunch of songs, recording an album, finding a band, doing gigs. That's kind of like how I see it in my brain. And that's kind of my goal for this year is to do all of that and at the same time release music every six weeks, every six to 10 weeks, which is pretty standard in the music industry and to really just hone in on that, grow my audience, grow as an artist and all of the things. Honestly, I have so many, but these are kind of like the top priority ones and I would really love to learn music licensing because I feel like a lot of people make a lot of good money on that. And that would just add to me as an artist, me as an entrepreneur, as a businesswoman of just, I love having multiple streams of income, guys. Like, it's just, it's fun for me. I don't know what, but that's definitely something I wanna get into. My next category is finance, and that would be to scale music and content creation to six figures so that I can just really sustain my whole life of being a creative, whether that's music or content. I really want to be able to diversify my income, which I have a lot at this point, but I would really just like to grow that a lot more. A huge goal for me is to grow my savings to at least have a six month emergency plan. I just feel like all the financial gurus say that that. And then I'm like, I definitely don't have that. So great. The thing that I saw on TikTok actually is a no spend January and I've been pretty good about it. I will not lie. There's been instances where I'm like, do I actually need that? Maybe. I think I talked about this in my vlog of just how I only want to spend on the necessities for this month. And maybe I'll do that for February and March, maybe every month, honestly, because I think now that I have this like mindset of like, I actually don't need that right now. I have been spending less and I do double think when I'm gonna order something on Amazon and I am like, I don't need to go online and shop. Like I have so much clothes, way too much clothes. So I'd like to like donate some, maybe sell some online. And when I get rid of clothing, then I can bring more in or save it more for like moments that I actually need a new outfit. But for the most part, I'm like, I need to get creative, make my, own outfits out of all the clothes that I have and not just like spend like crazy. And if I'm gonna spend, I want it to be an experience. But for January, I'm definitely doing only necessities, nothing extra. Another goal is to become more financially literate. I've been listening to a lot of money podcasts, a lot about investing and all of those books that I've heard be talked about for years. I really wanna get into that and just kind of like grow my knowledge on that because I feel like for so long, I've, I've just been kind of whatever about money. I've just been like, yeah, money comes to me. I have money, cool. I can pay for this, I can do that. And I'm pretty good at saving when I really want to, but I feel like if I just have more knowledge under my belt, I'd be way, way better at it. So <laughs> let's wrap this up really quick. So one of my main things that I've started to implement into my life, my new morning routine is me waking up between six and 6.30. I just have to wake up early if I want to get motivated and have the most out of the day, especially when the sun goes down at like 4 p.m. 
So I love to wake up early now and I wanna to get to the gym by seven. So before I get to the gym, I will obviously wake up, do my skincare, do my ice rolling, I will journal, and I will drink as much water as possible and I'll take my probiotic. I'll try to get to the gym. Be my goal is to get to the gym by seven so that I can do a 15, 20 minute warm up of stretches and then also incline walk. And then when I'm on my phone there, I will maybe put on a podcast or YouTube video just while I'm warming up. But during the workout, I really am just trying to listen to music. I was getting in a habit of also listening to podcasts, but I feel like I don't get that extra umph, you know what I mean, that I need for my workout. So when going into my goals for health and fitness, I already work out six times a week. I already eat clean, I drink a lot of water, like I have practiced a healthy lifestyle for a long time and I know I can always improve and so that's like a, just a constant thing for me. But I've noticed that when I'm more intentional and more present in my workout, I just get a better workout, I feel better, I feel like I'm like activating whatever muscle I'm working on and I know a lot of fitness girls talk about mind to muscle connection and it's so true. And so I would find myself literally just like scrolling through random Instagram posts or TikTok or changing videos of YouTube. So now I just listen to straight up music and that also inspires me as an artist, as a singer because music just is so inspiring for me. Like once I start my day off with music, I'm like in the zone for the rest of the day. It like really, it just puts me in a great mood. After my workout, I will do 20 minutes of the Stairmaster, which I know is rough, and there I will let myself get on like TikTok or YouTube or whatever, or maybe I'll just stay on music, it depends. And then I do a 10 minute meditation afterwards in the massage chairs. Sometimes I won't even put the massage, I'll just like be laying there. I've been doing this since January 3rd because I feel like the first I was traveling and the second I was getting my life together. So I've been trying to do the same schedule every single day since the third and it's now the 11th so i'm going strong and i'm just gonna take that with me for as long as possible but obviously with health and fitness i feel like i just love always learning and like taking my vitamins and eating as clean as possible staying away from processed foods my main thing is to stick to real food so i don't eat a lot of processed food or sodas or things like that. Also working on my caffeine intake because I love my coffee and my matchas. So I'm trying to stick to one coffee and one matcha a day. And if I just need one coffee, like my morning coffee that I'm still sipping on, then I, that's okay. Like I don't want to have the matcha just because it's like part of my routine. I'd rather have less caffeine in the day because I don't wanna do adrenal fatigue, but that's a whole other subject. And in my personal goals, I really just want to make sure that I'm traveling every few months making girls plans with my girlfriends because I did that a lot last year and it was so much fun and it just makes life, I don't know, and memories so amazing and I wouldn't take any of those trips back for anything even if I spent a lot of money. I just feel like those memories, those core memories and those relationships are things that I'll never regret or forget. Hey, rhyming. So I definitely want to continue doing that this year, of like planning a girl's trip every few months. Definitely want to go to new places this year. I feel like I traveled a lot back and forth between the same cities that I've already been to. And there's something nice in that because it's like you're familiar and you know it, but I definitely, if I'm gonna travel, I wanna to go to new places. So my boyfriend's going on tour and I know I'm gonna be able to go visit him. Might go to South Dakota, I might go to Key West. I might go to Dallas, but that's not a new place <laughs> at all. My parents live there. <laughs> and yeah, and hopefully really make sure that I stay on that travel schedule. Hopefully not as much as last year because no one tells you that traveling is absolutely exhausting. It's a lot of fun, but it's definitely, I'm a routine girl and I love being at home in my space and environment, but yes. I know that was a lot, we're finally done. There's so many more things I could talk about, but let me know if you guys wanna see a part two of like just even more specifics into my goals or how I planned my year or how I journal or anything of that self-help stuff because that is like my jam. I have a few books lined up that I wanna read. So much, there's just so much. I feel like I can't fit it all into one video without it being like an hour long. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it to the end, you're a real one. And I hope this inspired you to go out, achieve your goals, your resolutions, things you wanna work on. It doesn't have to be the new year to have a fresh start. You can literally create a 
at any time and that's the beauty of it and you can change your life with just implementing little things each day so i hope this helped i love you guys and don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video yay